If you've been paying attention to the indie game scene lately, you may have seen people saying things like, this dumb fishing farming restaurant game might be game of the year, or how did this indie game about a diver with dad bod jump to the top of my game of the year rankings, and thought to yourself, they're obviously exaggerating. Well, no, they're actually not. Hi, I'm Laser Belch. Answer to what if you cross Burt Reynolds and Nick Swartzen, and Twitch streamer who's played entirely too many video games. And I'm here to tell you why you should play Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver is one of the most astonishingly charming games I've ever had fall into my lap, and pun fully intended. This game is deep. Disturbingly deep. Like introducing new mechanics and gameplay types 20 hours into the game deep, and they're always fresh, intuitive, and fun too. It's frankly a game that defies logic, and even though I know this is a good way to get people to not watch the video, I'm gonna recommend that you go play at least some of it yourself before you let me spoil the whole thing for you. It really is worth it to be surprised by the stuff this game throws at you. Dave the Diver is a game with an extremely simple concept. You play as Dave, who's been invited by his friend Cobra to open a sushi restaurant together. The blue hole they're opening the restaurant nearby is host to exotic and delicious fish from all around the world, and Dave is the man who's going to dive down to catch those fish. This sounds simple enough. Dave helps out Cobra's restaurant by catching fish, and then the restaurant serves the fish. Cobra and Dave profit, the end. But there's more. Much, much more. This is because Cobra has also promised the sushi chef, Boncho, that Dave would help out in the restaurant as well. They've come to the agreement that Boncho can prepare for dinner service during the day, and the restaurant will only serve customers in the evening. This means that Dave dives in the morning and afternoon to catch fish for the restaurant, and then helps manage the restaurant and serve customers in the evening. The game being titled Dave the Diver really only tells half the story. Much of the game is spent diving, but Another good portion of the game is spent serving customers in a hectic dinner rush, similar to the arcade classic Tapper. After your first dinner service, you're introduced to a biology grad student named Ellie, as well as Duff, Dr. Bacon, Sato, a dolphin friend, your first VIP customer, your first boss encounter, a guy who wants you to take pictures of the ocean for him, a farmer named Otto who turns out to be more than just a rowdy customer, PETA who are actually terrorists, an ancient underwater mermaid civilization, and you get the picture. When I said the game being titled Dave the Diver only tells half the story, I was lying. It really only tells about 5% of the story. Let's rewind a little bit. The only characters we're at all familiar with so far are Dave and Cobra. Dave is basically just a guy. A guy who's skilled at diving and is a bit of a pushover socially, but overall, he's just a guy. Cobra, on the other hand, is a gregarious cutthroat businessman who really wants to make money off of this sushi restaurant. And the last main character in the cast is the man who will be preparing the sushi dishes, Boncho. Boncho's stoicism and willingness to explore the depths of flavor this blue hole and this world have to offer will see you creating unheard of sushi dishes with explosive results, as seen in some of these Food Wars-esque cutscenes, minus the gratuitous nudity. He's a character whose personality we'll get to see through lighthearted conversation, flashbacks, exposition, and his interactions with antagonistic third parties. The secondary cast outside of Dave, Cobra, and Boncho are every bit as important to the story, if not more sometimes. Duff is a weapons expert who will allow Dave to create rifles, shotguns, net guns, and more. He's also a massive weeb and will, on more than one occasion, make sure that you're well aware of it. Dr. Bacon is an archaeologist studying the Blue Hole in hopes of finding evidence of an ancient civilization of sea people who he believes existed here thousands of years ago. He's also easily excited, gets in over his head at every available opportunity, and might have a tiny bit of a drinking problem. Otto is a farmer who's visiting Boncho's Yoshi restaurant and hosting Vincent Yamaoka with Boncho back when Star Wars is a real piece of shit. Pump the brakes. Okay, you get it. There are a lot of characters. But the reason that I'm focusing so much on this is because the characters aren't there just to make it seem like the world is more lived in. 
Each of them serves a distinct purpose, has a consistent personality, oftentimes get their own well-animated cutscenes, introduce new game mechanics, and they're also damn likable. Duff is a bit of a shithead, but I would go to war for this man. It really is a credit to the writing of this game that I never really got tired of reading the dialogue, which is especially a good sign because I read it aloud to hundreds of adult children. Twitch.tv slash laserbelch, stop by, it's a good time. Even when three characters would roll up on me in separate boats and then also call me right afterward to tell me more stuff, I still didn't get tired of it. The very idea of so much unexpected socializing should make my millennial skin crawl, but it's actually very welcome in this game. You'll genuinely look forward to these characters hitting you up regularly because it won't just be for idle chit chat. They'll usually give you a new quest, a new app on your phone, or entirely new gameplay mechanics, even when you're several chapters into the game. Now, that would be a smooth transition into me talking about how completely insane this game's wellspring of content is, but we should start with just talking about the main gameplay loop first. The Blue Hole is where you'll be spending the majority of your time in Dave the Diver. It's where you'll be exploring, catching fish, and progressing the story for the most part. The Blue Hole also has an ecological phenomenon in which the terrain changes every time Dave commits to a new dive. This is their explanation for the wide variety of oceanic life living here, as well as a good way to vary up the gameplay as you go out for your 50th dive. You start out with a very limited supply of oxygen, which serves as a de facto health bar, and a harsh limit to how deep you can dive, both of which can be upgraded in your main menu while you're on the boat. The tools you'll be using to catch fish are a weak short-range knife and a harpoon gun, the latter of which can also be upgraded. There is no time limit to how long you can dive, so the only limiting factors before you need to go back up are how much oxygen you have remaining and how much weight you're carrying. Dave can dive once in the morning and once in the afternoon, and once evening comes, he'll have to head back to Boncho's for dinner service. At this point, you'll be able to use the fish you've caught to prepare that evening's menu before you open up for the night to serve customers. Excess ingredients can even be expended to level up dishes, permanently making them taste better and sell for more money. This proves to be pretty simple at first, since only a handful of customers will be coming through and the only things you need to do is make sure that they get their food in a timely manner and sometimes serve them green tea. And don't forget to refill the wasabi! Before long though, Bancho's will become a very popular destination for people seeking the finest sushi in the world. Once you've learned enough recipes, gotten enough followers on the app Cooksta, and acquired a dish with a high enough taste threshold, you can upgrade the restaurant from bronze to silver to gold, platinum, and finally diamond. The volume of customers at this point will be way too much for Dave and Boncho to handle alone, especially since Dave gets pretty winded trying to rush meals over to customers. So it's time to hire some help. Once you've progressed the story a little bit, you'll be given the option to put out hiring ads to attract help. My restaurant is staffed by a huge buff guy, a luchador, an anime girl, and co-carnage. Your employees can be trained to level up their stats at cooking and serving, as well as learning new skills to make them even more useful. Like I said, this game gets pretty deep. Speaking of which, the next step beyond fishing and serving sushi is to progress the game's story. The main story beats will see Bancho's visited by VIP customers, almost all of whom will be asking for some kind of exotic dish that you don't have the means to prepare yet. This naturally segues into Dave diving deeper into the blue hole, where he'll encounter the other major facet of the story, the sea people. The Sea People are encountered fairly early in the story, but their conflict becomes the driving force behind the main plot shortly after Dave meets them. Upon defeating the first boss, yeah, side tangent, this game has bosses, Dave's not just expected to contend with random dangerous fish as he dives, he'll also have to fight off a giant ship devouring squid, a great white shark, an enormous mantis shrimp, and a plethora of other insane aquatic terrors during his time exploring the blue hole. Tangent over. After defeating the first boss, we get our first glimpse at the Sea People. Dave can't yet understand them, but once that obstacle is overcome, it's up to Dave to gain their trust so that he can establish a connection between the Sea People and the surface, and help stave off the sickness, unnatural heat, and frequent sea quakes plaguing the Sea People. The first two Sea People Dave encounters aren't the only ones in the Blue Hole. Far from it. Suwam and Rama will guide you to the rest of the Sea People who dwell in a huge underwater village with shops, 
culture, gambling, seahorse races, public transit, and an enormous tree which serves as their main source of energy. This game just won't stop expanding. And honestly, we're still only scratching the surface here. It's sincerely mind-boggling the number of times meeting a new character or speaking with a character you're already familiar with will yield this screen. This is the screen which indicates that you're being given new content. It will offer a tiny tutorial on what's new, and it's rarely confusing or overwhelming. But in addition to that, every new mechanic makes perfect sense in the story. Boncho is making banger sushi, but his establishment only serves green tea as a beverage. Bam. Now you've got a tap, and you can serve cold beer to your customers. A snooty, out-of-town movie producer won't eat your sushi unless it's made with rice that isn't local to your region. Bam. Otto builds a farm with a rice paddy overnight. Cobra suspects that Sea Blue, the PETA organization, might be up to some shady stuff, so you infiltrate their base in an obvious homage to Metal Gear Solid. Mechanic after mechanic and gameplay element after gameplay element start getting stacked until suddenly you find yourself 700 meters deep in the blue hole with a level 4 death rifle, multiple Boncho Sushi franchises and 20 plus employees, an enormous farm, a fish tank full of various fish which are constantly reproducing to create new and fresh ingredients, solving puzzles as you avoid mermaid zombies. It's genuinely a game that doesn't stop giving all the way up until the credits roll and I couldn't get enough of it. Now, it wouldn't be fair for me to make a video where I gush endlessly about Dave the Diver without also properly addressing the areas where I think the game falls a little short. There are a few sections of the game where the dialogue insists on holding your hand and making sure you know exactly what to do in every single puzzle. Unless there's some sort of accessibility option that I wasn't aware of that I could shut off, I really would have preferred to figure this stuff out on my own. But the puzzles weren't so obtuse that this was anything more than a minor annoyance. The blue hole is randomized, and the variation in the fish you're able to catch and the dangers you interact with is nice, but the randomization is very limited, so you'll end up seeing a lot of the same variations while you're diving. This doesn't drag the game down substantially, but a little bit more randomization would definitely have felt nice toward the end of the game. The game also features charms, which can give Dave some welcome boost to his stats, and convenience for getting through some underwater hindrances. A few of these charms are so beneficial, however, that you almost can't justify taking them off once you're used to having them, which hampers your build variety. It'd be nice if the one that automatically makes the tube worms recede, for example, was just a latent ability once you received it. But again, this is a minor gripe. The one complaint that I have which I feel is not a minor gripe is the quick time events. The game features a substantial amount of mashing, rotating the control stick quickly, and wiggling the stick rapidly from side to side which isn't the end of the world for a lot of players, especially you sicko Mario Party veterans, but it is an accessibility sticking point for some people who simply can't mash quickly or execute the proper control stick motions to catch fish, win cooking competitions, or evade incoming attacks. It's a feature that I do feel is entirely at odds with the otherwise chill vibe that the game is usually going for. This is one blemish that I do hope is addressed at some point in the future, but all of these nitpicks aside, I really can't praise the overall package of Dave the Diver enough. Now, you might think I've fully covered Dave the Diver at this point. That there can't possibly be any more to this game than what I've already covered, but you would be sorely mistaken. I've left loads of things out of this overview for the express purpose of you, the viewer, to be surprised by it on your own. I really can't convey enough how insane and delighting it is to be greeted by that new content window so many times. Every single time you think, alright, that's it. The game can't possibly throw anything new my way. It smirks at you and introduces something new and sometimes huge. Like the WarioWare minigame cooking competitions or playing as an entirely different character who isn't Dave. Alright, seriously this time, no more spoilers. It's baffling to me what can be done with a video game when the devs are singularly focused on making something that's fun and they know exactly the tone and scope of their project. This game is an absolute delight. And if you're at all interested in indie games, side scrollers, or just a game with likable characters and chill vibes, you can't pass this one up. And all of this is why you should play Dave the Diver. Hey, if you made it this far, I'm assuming you're either about to click off the video or your phone is across the room, but in the rare instance that you're actually watching my ending card, thank you so much for watching. 
Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you'd like me to do more of these in the future and to give my life some much needed meaning. And stop by my stream at twitch.tv slash laserbelch. Streaming is my main gig. I'm not really much of a YouTuber yet, but I'd like to get into it more. So if you really enjoyed, I'd love to hear about it over there. Thank you for watching.